Good evening. This is my week five journal for my Ashford class HWE 200 health and wellness. Tonight I will be speaking on diabetes, um, type two diabetes, which is something close to me because, well, I'll explain it in, in my journal. Explain the results of your assessment and identify your risk of diabetes. I completed assessment activity 13-3 in the text as directed. The assessment was to assist in determining my risk factors for diabetes mellitus. It was a 10 question assessment that addressed symptoms associated with the disease and familial, familial history. Diabetes mellitus is a very sensitive subject to me as I lost my maternal grandmother to this horrible debilitating disease when I was like in the beginning of my adulthood it wasn't so much that the disease itself but the devastating complications due to the illness to our illness uh for a long for as long as i can remember well for a long time my grandmother was plagued for a long long time my grandmother was plagued with the disease she had um for a very long time um she suffered with this disease um, that was very hard on the family to cope with and deal with, um, which started very young, like I said, very pretty much into my, like I said, it, into my adulthood. Um, her disease had progressed to the point where one of her, where it, it got to the point where she became bedridden. Um, uh, unfortunately, my grandmother was overweight, which only compounded her suffering and exuberated the disease process. The first question on the assessment was addressing familial history of the diabetes mellitus. And of course, based on what I've shared thus far, the answers was a resound, res resounding yes. The other nine questions, however, I was shared. I, the other nine questions, I was fortunately able to answer no confidence. I am not easily tired. Haven't had haven't in, haven't any haven't had any frequent urination or persistent thirst. I haven't had any changes of vision or weight. I am not overweight and I do not eat in excess. I have never come across any concerns for abnormal wound healing or skin itching or irritation. As it stands now, I would conclude that my risk is minimal. However, I would debate that based on my age that if I don't start eating right or incorporating some type of daily physical activity into my lifestyle style, that all of that could change and my risk would be much, much greater. Based on my history, I have been cognizant of symptoms related to the disease and have tried at least one. I have tried and have tried and at least while I was in the military to keep my risk factors to a bare minimum. The next question was examine the relationship between health and wellness by discussing the impacts of the of diabetes mellitus on at least three dimensions of wellness. As we covered in the first few chapters of the text, the dimension of wellness are spiritual, social, physical, emotional, intellectual, occupational, and occupation and environmental. I think having a disease so incapacitating as diabetes that nearly all dimensions of wellness are affected. Just think of occupational wellness, for example. As my grandmother's health began to deteriorate because of her, her illness or occupational wellness was disturbed greatly. She had missed work um, a great deal of the time during the time in which she had the illness. Missed few medical appointments and was unable to work at all at some point. And my family had its own my grandmother and my grandfather had their own family business um, and so it was even though it was unfortunate that she couldn't work it was fortunate enough that they had their own business so my grandfather was able to keep the business thriving her physical well wellness was affected the the most the, the most though the physical component of wellness involves the ability to carry out daily tasks develop cardiovascular, respiratory and muscular fitness maintain adequate nutrition and a health body fat level and avoid abusing alcohol and other drugs or tobacco products. My grandmother wasn't an abusive drug user, of course, not at all. She didn't even smoke. Um, she stopped smoking years, 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 and years ago when I was, I, I believe she stopped smoking before I even was born. I heard she used to smoke, but 
and she wasn't smoking. Um, I never I can remember my grandmother smoking. Um, she stopped drinking years and years ago. My, years and years ago, my grandmother was a Christian, so she moved away from all of that. Due to my grandmother's illness, she was unable to carry out daily tasks. Her nutrition nutrition was de- uh, deficit, and as previously mentioned, she was morbidly obese. If I had the tools that I have now with classes such as this, I feel I could have have been more helpful in her co- combating or managing this disease process. Emotional wellness is a dimension that people that people all too often overlook as important to overall overall health. A component of emotional wellness is coping with stressors. Stressors disrupt the body's delicate balance of powerful hormones and serve as a trigger for a myriad of health problems, mainly diabetes, diabetes as it relates to this week's journal. Many studies report on the connection between wellness and emotional health. Next thing was, uh, next task was identify three lifestyle habits a person, per, a person can practice to reduce his or her risk of type 2 diabetes. One way to combat the F effects of diabetes is to exercise regularly. The ADA or the American Diabetes Association recommends a total of 30 minutes a day at least five days a week. Exercising regularly reduces resistance to insulin thus lowering glucose levels. Another tool we have is maintaining a healthy weight which is done by exercising regularly and by adding the third habit of a low fat high fiber diet. These three habits work in concert to significantly reduce the likelihood of developing type diabetes again this is my week five journal for hwe 200 health and wellness this is sean davis thank you i appreciate you watching everyone have a blessed day